Thank you for joining us on tonight's Teletown Hall. My name is Joe, and I'll be moderating tonight's discussion. We're fortunate to have with us Chippewa Valley School Superintendent Ron Roberts, Christy Walker, Internship Coordinator for CVS, Macomb County Sheriff Anthony Wickersham, and School Board Trustee Kiss Chris Gura. Uh, here, uh, here's how tonight's tele town hall will work. Our speakers will discuss the importance of supporting school safety and personnel, and the role of schools in providing real-world, hands-on learning opportunities. We will then have a question and answer session. If you have a question, you can press star three on your keypad at any time, and you will be placed in a, lot, um, in a line to speak with a member of our team who will add, you to the que who will add your question to the queue. If you're joining us online, you can type your question right into the question box. Thank you again for joining us. With that, to, I'll kick it off uh, to Ron Roberts, Chippewa Valley School Superintendent. Thank you, Ron. Um, thank you, Joe. And thank you to everyone uh, for taking the time out of your busy summer schedules to be here tonight. I know um, that th there are things you could be doing outside right now in the sunshine, and you're here, and we really appreciate that. My name is Ron Roberts, and I'm superintendent of Chippewa Valley Schools. I'm proud superintendent of Chippewa Valley Schools. And um, we all know that the economy and workforce are, are more, than competitive, more competitive than ever. And from an educational standpoint, that makes it critical for us as a school district to provide access to real-world hands-on learning opportunities to prepare our students for these good paying jobs. And this applies to all our students. Our students are different. Whether they are bound for college or technical training or entering the workforce right after graduation. For us to prepare students for this kind of success, we need community support. It's imperative. The Chippewa Valley Schools Operating Millage Renewal which is on the Tuesday, August 6th ballot, helps us continue to support these programs, these programs that prepare students for the competitive modern workforce. So if renewed, it will continue to support things like career technical instructors who help prepare our students for these high-skilled jobs, many in the skilled trades. But the millage goes much further than that. It also supports teachers and support staff. It supports school safety officers and counselors and social workers and school health services staff, food service workers, and, and other school members essential to the safety, health, and achievement of our students. It is really important to note that this millage renewal does not cost homeowners one penny in taxes. This would be paid by rental property owners, owners of second homes, commercial properties, and businesses. Our millage renewal benefits the entire school community, including those who don't even have kids in our schools. This millage renewal will help keep our property values high and home values strong. Good schools always, they always translate to higher property values. We all know, and I think that we can agree, that strong schools help make our community a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family, or to start a small business. Thank you so much, Ron. At this point, we're going to get some feedback from everybody who's on the line. Uh, we're going to ask you all a poll question, and you can answer by using the buttons on your phone. So our first question is, how important is access to career technical and other hands-on learning opportunities at CVS? To answer very important and should be a top priority, please press 1. To answer important but not a priority, please press 2. To answer somewhat important, please press 3. And to answer not important, please press 4. Okay, next. We'd like to introduce Christy Walker to talk more about uh, the role of career technical instruction in our school community. So Christy, on to you. Thank you, Joe. My name is Christy Walker, and I have the privilege of being the internship coordinator for Chippewa Valley Schools. In my role, I help connect students who are enrolled in career and technical education programs 
with the major employers in the Macomb County and surrounding areas. Students at Chippewa Valley High School and Dakota High School are extremely fortunate to be able to choose from 15 different CTE programs that set them on a path toward a variety of rewarding and in-demand careers. Our CTE programs include mechatronics, automotive technology, construction trades, medical academy, cybersecurity, and design technology, just to name a few. While students are enrolled in these programs, they are guided by educators who have a background in the industry that they're interested in exploring. Those educators provide high quality programming using state-of-the-art technology. Through our CTE programs and local partnerships, I have the distinct honor of helping these students be placed in job shadows or internship experiences. These experiences literally save students and families thousands of dollars in post high school training and certification. One of my favorite stories from this last year is a young man named Noah. Noah was a part of our construction trades program for two years. Noah knew he wanted to go into construction trades, but wasn't sure what trade was right for him. Through our partnership with Ideal Contracting, Noah was able to spend second semester of his senior year working at the GM Tech plant. Ideal knew that he wasn't set on a trade specific yet, so they took the time to show him all the trades that were going on there at the GM Tech Center, and I'm happy to report that Noah has decided that he would like to go into the Carpenters Union. Ideal Contracting really enjoyed having Noah. They see the promise that he holds, and they are sponsoring him this fall to become a apprentice tradesmen in the Carpenters Union. Our career and technical education programs help create this talent pipeline right here in Macomb County and the surrounding area. This means that more students can find rewarding, good paying jobs near home. As a mother of three teenage daughters myself, I now understand the value more than anything because I'd like my girls to set up here in Macomb County. The key is having highly qualified career and technical education instructors who can speed up on all the latest industry demands and certification requirements for our young people. It makes it essential to continue supporting these industry professionals who are preparing our kids for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Please be sure to get the facts on the upcoming millage renewal that will support opportunities for our skilled training of young people so that they can compete for the job. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, I want to let everybody know the results of uh, our poll. Um, so we had 70% of the audience uh, saying that, uh, you know, the uh, career technical and other hands-on learning opportunities are very important and should be a top priority. 22% uh, saying they were important but not a priority, and 9% saying they were somewhat important. Um, so uh, I also want to remind everybody, please press star 3. That's star three to be added to our Q&A queue. Uh, and uh, you can add a question to the question box if you're listening online. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Macomb County Sheriff Anthony Wickersham, uh, who will discuss the need to safe, uh, to support safety personnel and upgrades to our communities, uh, upgrades to keep our community safe. The floor is yours, Sheriff. Thank you, Joe. School safety has never been more important today as we hear nationwide about school shootings, criminal activity far too often. Our students, parents, local small business owners, and other community stakeholders tell me the same thing repeatedly. Safety and security must be a top priority for our Chippewa Valley Schools community. That makes it critical to support our school resource officers and safety upgrades in our schools. Chippewa Valley Schools is fortunate to have a strong working relationship with their school resource officers who help keep the hallway safe and have a positive impact on our students. As the nature of school threats continues to evolve, it will be crucial to continue supporting our school resource officers who help keep our students, staff, and families safe. Like we've heard many times on this call, I hope the folks listening in tonight will get the facts on the Chippewa Valley Schools operating millage renewal on the Tuesday, August 6th ballot. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sheriff Wickersham. At this point, we're going to ask another poll question here. Um, we're going to... Uh, 
we're going to ask, how important are school safety officers at Chippewa Valley Schools? To answer very important and should be a top priority, please dial 1. To answer important but not a top priority, please dial 2. To answer somewhat important, please press 3. And to answer not important, please press 4. With that, um, I'm going to remind everybody to press star 3 to ask a question. And I'd like to um, introduce school board trustee Chris Gura. Take it away, Chris. Thank you, Joe. As a Board of Education trustee, I'm especially proud of our outstanding career tech programs and our amazing staff and community partners who make them possible. Workforce demands constantly change, making it critical to provide hands-on learning opportunities that prepare all of our students for in-demand, good-paying jobs, including those jobs in the skilled trades. Our teachers, support staff, counselors, social workers, and health and food service workers help us serve, serve the needs of the whole child and prepare our students for success and their careers. As a school board trustee, I also hear from parents and residents all the time who say we must do everything possible to enhance school security and stay ahead of the emerging threats. As we heard from Sheriff Wickersham, school safety is a top priority. We are fortunate to have an exemplary team of school resource officers in our schools who help us achieve that goal to keep our students, our staff, and our community safe every day. The Chippewa Valley Schools Operating Millage Renewal on the August 6th ballot will help support these essential staff and programs, and I encourage everyone to learn more about this important renewal today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I want to give everybody the results of our second poll here. We have how important are schools, uh, our school safety officers at Chippewa Valley Schools? And we have a whopping 96% saying that they are very important and should be a top priority, um, with 4% coming in uh, next at uh, important but not a priority. So that's you know a major priority for everybody here. Um, what staff uh, – so we're going to ask some questions here, have a Q&A. Please, again, I want to ask everybody to press star 3 on your phone um, to uh, ask a question, um, as well as if you're listening online, you can put a question into the question box. One question that we're seeing here is what staff, in addition to CTE instruct, um, instructors and safety officers, are supported by this millage renewal? Superintendent Roberts? Yes? Do you, do you want me to ask that question again for you from the audience here? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that that was a question for me. So, um, No problem. Yeah. No, no, go well, ahead. Sorry. The whole, the whole panel you. can go ahead and answer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to repeat it here just to make sure, you know, everybody's good to go. And that is what staff, in addition to CTE instructors and safety officers, are supported by this millage renewal? Well, this millage renewal supports so many things in our school district and so many different staff members. Um, you think of our counselors and our social workers, and we have um, uh, people who, who deal with health issues in our schools and our clerical staff and our food so service workers. Um, they're, all, they're all impacted by this um, non-homestead millage because the money from the non-homestead millage really runs so many, so many aspects of our school district, and it, and it represent, represents a large, um, a large part of our funding. So um, those are some of the staff members, but it really trickles down throughout the district. Fantastic. Another question we're seeing from uh, members of the audience here is, what will this renewal cost on average for homeowners? Well, for homeowners, and this, 
this, uh, the non-homestead millage has been in place since 1994. Um, and for homeowners, people who live in their primary residence, this, this, this will represent um, not one penny of an increase in their taxes. I'd also like to add that it doesn't really, it doesn't represent a decrease either. I mean, to vote no um, for our homeowners, taxes remain the same. This, this, um, this non-homestead millage re really represents other aspects of our community, such as um, rental properties and second homes and businesses and commercial property. So for our homeowners, and I would imagine that most people on the line tonight are homeowners, um, this, will, this does not represent one penny of an increase for them. Well, that's great. And that kind of leads to um, my next question. What happens if this proposal doesn't pass? Well, there's, there's, it, it impacts certain things. So if it doesn't pass, it means not, nothing regarding uh, taxes for homeowners. They, they remain the same. Um, but the non-passage of this, of this proposal would really devastate our school district. Um, we have had um, this as part of our budget since 1994, and to lose this much funding, which, it, which represents 8% of our total budget, um, we would have to really go for this millage again um, because of the devastation it would cause in our school district, and I don't think anyone wants that. So I really believe that anyone really understands um, what this millage means, I think our community, who always has supported our schools and believes in strong schools and believes in giving, giving kids opportunities and believes in sending kids out of school prepared for their next step in life, they will vote yes um, because of the devastation this would cause to our district without um, this very large, um, a large amount of money, which really comes to next year of approximately $18 million. So um, it, it's, it would be devastating not to pass, and I'm just glad people are on this um, call tonight to listen because I think more people understand, um, because it is unusual and we only do this every 10 years, um, that they'll support it and um, we'll be able to provide, um, continue to provide uh, the quality education that we provide to all students. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Ron. Now, another question we're kind of you know seeing from the audience here is that the teachers really need support. And does this proposal help support the teachers who really do the work in our classrooms? Well, first, it, it impacts programs we have in our district, which impacts teachers and impacts our students. But of course, it impacts our teachers. Uh, I mean, when you when you when you look at what you do when you have to reduce in a school district, you reduce many things which support classroom, uh, what happens in a classroom. For example, um, you think about counselors and social workers and our school resource officers. All those, those are things that we spend this money on. So this, this does have a big impact on the classroom and the support that... Um, uh, teachers, teachers need to do their job and for our students to learn. And what about school nurses and other school health personnel? Yeah. I know that no, those are absolutely included. P people who work in in supportive positions, uh, people who work to um, help help our teachers with technology, um, people who help our teachers develop curriculum and select the most current and relevant resources. Um, all of those things are represented by um, this non-homestead millage, this money that's uh, a part of this proposal. So, you know, something I think that we've, you know, talked about tonight is, you know, training for careers. And, you know, we know everyone is not going to go to college. And is Chippewa Valley doing things to connect kids with the skilled trades and jobs in welding and uh, carpentry like um, we heard that example about Noah? You know, what other things are we, are we hearing or, and how can this millage really help here? Well, the, 
one of the things that was talked about extensively tonight was our CTE program, and we offer 15 different programs. Now, some of those programs are designed for students who are going to go to college when they leave high school. Some programs are designed for kids who go to skilled trades, and some are designed for kids who go directly into the workforce. So this has a huge impact on, on the programs that would be available to these students. And these, these programs we offer lead to high paying jobs. And we know that in the workforce today, um, there are shortages in many areas. We have students who, who work in auto, auto dealerships and are learning to become auto techs. Um, this, this potentially could impact that program. And, and that's important to note because we have people who manage auto dealerships who are saying to us, send us more students. Send us more students because we send them high quality prepared students and they have a shortage. So they want these students to come into their training programs because they can guarantee them um, high paying long term jobs. So uh, with this, uh, the non homestead millage, those types of things are really impacted. And that will have an, an impact on our local economy. I mean, we really need to have an economy based on skilled workers. And through much of what we do in our public schools, and specifically in Chippewa Valley schools, we meet a local need. So um, this, this, is, this is important, and I can't stress that enough. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Um, how does this proposal affect school safety? You know, uh, do you know we saw that that was really important in our second poll, and I just want to you know see if we can elaborate a little bit more on that. Sure. The um, and I was I was really I was not surprised by the poll, um, the results of the poll that was conducted on on tonight's um, town hall, the fact that ninety six percent of of people on this um, town hall right now thought it was a high priority. And I would say that within our school district, um, that's, that would be a, a figure that would represent how people within the system feel. Um, we all know that in anything you do, people need to feel safe. Um, that, that's imperative. If for students to learn, for teachers to teach, for people to do their work in any kind of a work setting, um, it, it, is, it is a priority um, for us to ensure that they feel safe. So we, we partner with both um, the Macomb Sheriff's and the Clinton Township Police to provide school safety or school resource officers, um, and, and they've become an integral part of our, of our school system. Um, they, they service all buildings, and they really provide for a sense of, of well-being and safety when, within our schools. And um, that, 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 that would be impacted because of the, when something represents such a high percentage of your budget, I had said 8%, in, in our budget, there, there's, not, there's not room for a lot of extras. So to cut 8%, as I mentioned earlier, would be devastating. And, and that would impact how we provide safety in our schools. So um, if, if we're going to be effective, we have to have that in place. And so that, that's, again, such an important reason as to why this um, millage um, needs to be successful. Thank you so much. And uh, Sheriff Wickersham, do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, the school resource officers that are in the schools now are, are worth, are, are invaluable. They are, um, you know, that first line of defense the the safety in the building 
but as I said in my remarks, um, you know, they're also interacting with the students, um, trying to make positive changes, uh, reaching out to students who um, may need somebody to talk to or may have some information on something that's happening outside of school. Um, you know, over the last few years, it's gone from take the police officers out of the schools and roughly the last three years, we've increased in now not only Chippewa Valley, but in all the school districts in which we police, we have school resource officers in all the high schools. Well, thank you so much. And Christy, is there anything else that you wanted to add about um, the career services that we talked about? Um, a consistent message that I just hear often when I'm in the field doing the work, um, checking on the students and checking in with the employers is that, as Ron was talking about, like our automotive program as an example, is Chippewa Valley Schools, the con particularly the career and technical education program, has set a standard for what is expected of these young people. And, you know, they're they're just commenting consistently about how they have this level of knowledge that they wish their adult employees were coming in with. And, you know, they can teach them anything, but it has they have to have that willingness to learn. And these young people coming in from our CTE programs have that. And so it's almost like the kids can have the pick of the litter. You know, whatever, wherever they want to go or whatever they want to do, if they're willing to work hard for it, we have those partnerships in place for them. And we have people who are educating them who are at the top of their field and giving them that content knowledge that they're so eagerly um, learning from. So I, I hope that people understand the importance of that relationship and how it directly affects their students in the community. Thank you so much. Um, now, we know that Chippewa Valley has a good track record for uh, their money management, unlike some other districts. Um, what can you tell us in terms of transparency, audits, anything else that um, you can add in those terms? Um, yeah, Joe, that's a good question, and I know that people are always concerned um, about their tax dollars and how they're spent. I would start by saying that, you know, our, our we're very transparent with our budget. It, it's right on the um, uh, district website, so people can go there and and learn about our budget and see how we um, spend money. Um, our budget information is in our board packets that are um, available online for every single board meeting. So we we do everything we can. We follow all you know state federal guidelines regarding transparency. Um, we're also audited every year. That's a requirement. Um, I know for a fact I, I watch this happen because the auditors are in a conference room that's near my office. So um, I know when they're here. I know the work that our business department does to prepare for the audit. And um, our, our rating from our auditors is always the highest possible rating. Um, they take their job seriously. Um, because their reputation as an organization is always on the line when they when they audit school districts, and we take our job related to um, transparency with our funds and making our public aware of how we spend our money. We take that very seriously. So, um, if anyone were on the line and had questions about this, I would encourage them. They could call my office, and I would put them in touch with people, the appropriate people in our business department. If they have further questions tonight about that, um, I understand why why people are concerned about that because unfortunately, occasionally there's something in the media where that hasn't happened somewhere else. But in our school district, um, I'm very proud of what we do. I'm very proud of the oversight. I'm proud of how we spend our money because our money goes to our students. It goes to our programs, and we're constantly evaluating our programs and seeing how we can enhance the curriculum. And that's what we take pride in in our school district is serving our district in this way so that, um, as, as has been said earlier in this um, town hall, we want our students to leave here with the skills they need 
to take the next step in their life for to to just lead successful lives. So um, auditing our budget and being transparent about it, about it is very important to us. Thank you so much. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about costs, and could you remind us who pays for this millage? Sure. This this millage, I just remind everyone, this is not this is not something that is paid by homeowners. It is ba paid by um, uh, business business owners, um, corporations who might be in our school district. It's paid by people who own second homes. It's it's paid by um, people who own apartment buildings or have rental houses. It is. This millage, um, the dollars here, are not paid by our homeowners. That's really helpful to understand. Now, how does this proposal benefit those in the community without kids? Well, um, I, I mentioned this earlier in this um, town hall that, you know, strong schools make for a strong community. And I, and I know that when because I, I hear this from many of our parents, when they chose to move into this school district, they chose it because of the schools. Um, people look around. People with children, of course, are concerned about that. But I think people without children should be equally as concerned because when they go to um, sell their house, um, of, everyone always wants the most that they can get, the highest value for their home as they move on to something else in their life. And that happens when you live in a community with strong schools. We want to attract kids and students to our schools. And for those people without um, children, um, that benefits them. Uh, you know, strong schools make a strong community. So it, it, it benefits everyone. Thank you so much. Now, um, I think we have time for one final question here. And, you know, uh, where can people go to get more information about the millage and, um, you know, hear other things, you know, in line of what we've been saying tonight? Yeah, the best place for people to go is right to our website, which is ChippewaValleySchools.org. Um, there's um, much information there for our um, – our community to to learn about the millage um, and while they're there I would suggest that they kind of peruse our website because I think that would be a wonderful time for them to learn about the many fantastic programs we offer our students give them the opportunity to learn about our um, our school in a more in a more deep way but Chippewa Valley Schools org is the place to go and you'll find lots of information about this millage there thank you so much now, Ron, do you have any other closing remarks that you want to give us? Well, well, thank you, Joe. And I would like to say, to begin by saying, um, our, our participants tonight asked some great questions. And I would also say that if anyone has questions that still need to be answered, I would encourage them to call. They can call directly to my office, and I can put them in touch with those people who can best answer those questions if it is not me. Um, but I really want to make sure that um, people feel comfortable when they vote and they understand how this money is being used and the safeguards that are in place to protect it and um, how it will benefit not only our students, um, our entire school community, and our entire community. So um, I think some of the things that um, people have heard tonight, our, our listeners have heard, is how imperative it is that we provide a safe, and secure a learning environment that helps prepare all of our students. I am so proud that in Chippewa Valley Schools, our staff act as a team to promote the health and safety of the students. It's not just about academic learning it, because you need health and safety for optimal academic learning. Um, and our goal, of course, is to set our kids on a path uh, toward a bright and successful future. Our school safety officers, which we talked extensively about tonight, our health and food services staff, our social workers and counselors, all help promote student safety and mental and physical health in our buildings. And furthermore, our career technical instructors, our teachers and support staff help 
provide our students with a world-class education that prepares them for in-demand and high-wage careers. And I know we've talked about that this evening, and I, and I want our listeners and our community in general to know, you know how important that is now and how important it is for that to continue. Um, and this is important for all of our students. Our, in a public school, um, a real point of pride for me is that we educate all students. Um, students come to us with different goals and different dreams, and families have goals and dreams for their kids. And some students want to attend college. Some want to um, pursue, pursue careers in skilled trades. And some just want to leave the workforce once they get their diploma. And those are the kids we are so proud to educate. So our millage renewal, which is on the August 6th ballot, supports all of this. It supports these staff and programs that play a key role in the success of our students and their future success, not only what happens to them every day in the classroom, but what's going to happen to them when they leave the classroom. We set our kids up for success, and, and having the proper amount of funding to do this is just so important. So, you know, and I, I've tried to make it clear tonight for our homeowners and, and for anyone else who's on this um, on this call is that this millage will cost our our homeowners not, not one penny in taxes. Um, and even though the 18 mills um, it, it impacts other people, it, it just behooves those other people to support this because a stronger community will positively benefit whatever they do in our community. If they're, if they're renting apartments, they want people to come to this school district and bring their children with them. They want those people to rent their apartments. Businesses want people like this to move into their community. So this really positively impacts our entire community. Um, so I just really, I encourage, I encourage everyone, if they have questions, they can call my office. Um, they can also, I think a good place to start, as I said earlier, is to go right to our website at ChippewaValleySchools.org. And there's lots of information there, and there's lots of information um, about this wonderful school district um, that wants to remain that way. And we, we fully expect to, and we, we need to move forward with offering our students all the valuable programs that they can participate in today. So thank you very much. And for those on the line, thank you for listening. Really appreciate it. Thanks again, Ron, and a big thank you to all of our speakers and to everyone who joined us tonight. Goodbye.